This milder-than-average weather pattern has been plaguing the United States for weeks now, but things are about to change as a mid-November storm could usher in a bunch of cooler air in a week or two. This video has all the details you need on the likely pattern change in the cooler air, including the potential for the storm that's going to bring it in to have some snowfall on its northern end. One nation weather. Happy Sunday or Monday, whenever you are watching this, I really appreciate you taking the time to join me in this video. Before I get right into it, I just wanted to quickly remind you that the awesome weather model maps I use in my videos are from Weatherbell, so check out their free trial link below in the description if you want them for yourself. Also, if you enjoy the rest of this video, everything that I present and the way it is presented, make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below on YouTube and turning on those notifications so you never miss an update in the future. But let's go ahead and get right into the next 10 days of overview for the weather pattern here using the future radar from the GFS model, because I not only want to show you the current pattern, but I actually want to contrast what is on the way with what we are having right now. And as we start out looking into our Monday, November 11th of 2024, into the afternoon and evening hours, the pattern is really quiet, other than a little bit of rainfall in some parts of the East Coast, a little bit of a chance of some rain in higher elevations, so in the Pacific Northwest, we're quiet Monday as well as into Tuesday. Things do begin to change just a bit, though, by the time we get towards our Wednesday. I'm going to go ahead and break it to you right now. This storm going out of Wednesday, and then as it moves east into Thursday, it is not going to be one that ushers in any big pattern changes. It's not going to bring in any sort of cool air. But what it is going to do is disrupt a few plans as we go into Wednesday and Thursday as it brings some rainfall. Wednesday morning, you can see your commute might be disrupted a bit if you live in parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, as well as into Iowa, down to Missouri, eastern Oklahoma, points in between. Scattered showers and storms. Overall, this storm does not look like it's going to have much of a chance if at all for severe weather, but I will let you know if that changes. Here we go out of the Wednesday morning time frame by the afternoon and evening. Storms pushing more towards the Mississippi Valley and even into points eastward from Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana all the way down there to Louisiana, Mississippi, and again in points in between. We will have a chance for some scattered showers and some brief heavy rainfall. This storm is going to be a quick mover, so it's already exiting the Ohio Valley and moving into parts of the Mid-Atlantic like Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, into a lot of eastern parts of Virginia and North Carolina. This is as we go towards Thursday, 2, 3, 4 in the afternoon. Other than needing the windshield wipers, an umbrella, that kind of thing on Thursday in this region, there's not going to be any sort of significant impacts expected. No crazy winds, no crazy chance for severe weather, and really no snow anticipated out of that storm at all. The GFS model, all other models as well that you could look at, do indicate that by the time we go out of Thursday into Friday, we see the country really just fully dry all over again, except for some, you know, trouble spots like maybe a spotty shower or two in New York, a little bit of precipitation back towards the Pacific Northwest. But when things begin to get interesting for our pattern changes as we go towards the upcoming next weekend, so about seven days out from when I'm filming this late on our Sunday, by the time we go to Sunday, November 17th of 2024, it looks like some unsettled conditions will begin to settle in to parts of the Central Plains, maybe the Midwest. And overall, by this point, just seven days out from when I'm filming this, it looks like this would pretty much all be rain and no snow chances unless you're back towards the Rockies or the far northern parts of a state like North Dakota out of any low pressure systems towards our Sunday. By the time we go towards Monday and Tuesday, this particular model has a front moving eastward. Considering we are more than a week out from this as I film this video, it is important to note that this is probably not going to be exactly how this plays out. But what the main point of this video is is the fact that whatever storm we get, whatever cold front we get at some point in the middle of next week, about 10 days out, that is probably going to be a cold front that is able to usher in cooler air, just like the GFS model is showing, even if the storm itself does not have any snow attached to it, even if it doesn't have too much rain, we could definitely see a big cooler shot some point Wednesday, November 20th, Thursday, November 21st in that general time frame. And a lot of other models are also jumping in on that train, not just this GFS. That would encompass a lot of the eastern and central United States. Let me show you why this is likely going to occur using the mid-level pattern. Looking up into the atmosphere, 15 to 20,000 feet. This is with your European ensemble members. So basically a collection of various models being averaged out to give you this one solution. First of all here, just showing you what the pattern is this week so you can see the contrast of what is eventually going to come in. Overall, anywhere from the southwest U.S. to the northeast, we've got an orange shade on the screen, and that indicates that we are seeing generally ridging in the jet stream. That is where it is being pushed up towards Canada and allowing warmer than average air to fill into a lot of the U.S. Obviously, you can see that white area in Iowa and Missouri. Middle of this week, that is that quick storm that's going to move east towards the mid-Atlantic by the time we go towards our Thursday. But as I've already mentioned, that storm is not going to do anything to the ridge in the jet stream, and the oranges and reds prevail even as we go towards Friday the 15th, November the 16th, on our Saturday as well. That being said, we begin to see some contrast like we've seen with a few of our more recent active weather patterns with a trough pushing up against that ridge as it exits the western U.S. and tries to make its way on out into the plains. You can see those blues indicating that trough over there towards California, Nevada, Utah, and Arizona primarily. Again, this would likely make for an active weather zone, maybe even some severe weather, gusty wind, that kind of stuff out here towards Texas, Oklahoma, 
Kansas, maybe even pushing up to the upper Midwest with at least some of those rainfall chances. And again, this would be with any precursor activity we see to our bigger storm, 16th, 17th, 18th, that is when our precursor activity is more likely. But then as we go out of the 18th into the 19th, so into the following week, we could actually see a strong pulse of energy exit the West and make its way out into the central U.S. This could certainly be associated with a stronger low pressure system. And as I mentioned earlier, it is not really how strong this is. It is not really necessarily a matter of what kind of winter weather we could see on the northern side of this storm that's actually going to usher in the cooler air. It is the fact that models are showing and agreeing on a longer range trough that's actually going to bring a cool shot into the eastern half of the country. The west has been the area that's been hogging a lot of the cooler than average air recently. So for those of you who want to cool down, or if you just don't like cool downs and you want to know about it, I can tell you that probably as we go towards the middle to back half of November, it is a higher chance that we will be having cool downs pushing east and not just staying back west of the Rocky Mountains. Let's use the same kind of thing that we were just looking at, an ensemble collection, to show you more details on the scenarios of how that big storm that ushers in the cool air could set up. These are the GFS ensemble members and their averages. First talking about precursor activity, if we get that, that would be sometime Saturday going towards Sunday. It could maybe even involve some isolated severe weather out into the plains. You can see that there, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, having some of those darker greens indicating a better chance of rain some point around Saturday the 16th going into our Sunday the 17th. Meanwhile, cooler air is still locked up in the west, and if we have any low-pressure systems around the Rockies, those could certainly be producing snowfall there at that time. Nothing unusual, very similar to the pattern we've been having for the last several times that we've gotten you know, a low-pressure system moving out into the central U.S., but when things begin to change is when we exit this precursor activity and begin to shift into the early to mid part of this following week, so as we go towards say the 18th, the 19th, the 20th of November, this is when we could see an actual low pressure system bringing cool air behind it out here into the central United States. Do not focus on the exact locations you see blues for snow. Do not focus on the exact locations you see greens for rain because there is a lot of ifs, ands, and buts surrounding where the storm could be if it even forms. The cool down has to get down somehow though, and the models are keen on the fact that the cool down will come down. So could that mean that we could get a little bit of snow wrapping around a strong low pressure system up into the north central U.S. around Monday, Tuesday, somewhere in that time frame, the 18th into the 19th? I would not rule that out. Either way, we're probably going to have some form, even if it's a weak storm system, some form of a system making its way towards the east coast by the middle of that week, so around Wednesday the 20th, and just the general time frame of that day. We could have rain near the east coast and maybe some flurries and lake effect snow wrapping around behind it. Again, this is all dependent on how strong the low is, but the main story is that regardless of where the storm goes, we're probably going to have cool air pushing into the pattern unless something really crazily changes. And again, that storm that brings in the cool air could certainly have snow. This is very early information. Do not go around sharing this like it is exactly what's going to happen. But these European ensemble members are showing in a three-day snowfall window from November 17th through the 20th, so lining up with when that big storm could form. Certainly some potential for at least some light to moderate snowfall accumulation to get going out of the western parts of the plains and into the Rockies. All the way on up here into the northern plains, places like Nebraska, the Dakotas, Minnesota, if we get some early week snowfall that week, would certainly have the best chance of occurring up here and accumulating in at least a light to moderate fashion. Again, do not really focus on the totals because there's very low confidence and there being snow with the system right now. But overall, if there were to be snow as it continues moving east and that cooler wraps around it, it would not be as far south as places like Tennessee and Mississippi. It would be up here towards the Midwest, into the Ohio Valley, and into some of these usual interior northeast areas that either get northwest to southeast wind flow bringing snow or the lake effect snow potential or both please do not say i didn't warn you though that storm is a very 50 50 type of thing especially this far out the cool down is what is more likely so i want to go ahead and take us into the temperature discussion now using the national digital forecast database so you can see the highs as we go into this week and then i'm going to help you contrast them from what some ensembles and models are showing more towards the following week with our cool down Look at this near-term mildness. I mean, we're looking at 60s pushing as far north as South and even North Dakota into the middle to back half of this week. This is Thursday, and remember, this is behind that little round of some rain that we're going to see push through the central and eastern parts of the country. So again, that does pretty much nothing to remove the ridge and these 50s and 60s that are moving through. Let's look at some of the localized temperatures, 70 to 72-ish in a place like Dallas Thursday. We've got mid-70s through a lot of Louisiana, 60s over towards Georgia and the Carolinas, 60s up into Paducah, Kentucky around 60 degrees up towards Chicago, Illinois as well, and 55 in a place like Detroit being more like it. Even as we go towards this upcoming weekend when we could begin to see some precursor activity to the big storm get going, 
that is when we will still have plenty of 60s and 70s and even more of them pushing northward. Let's take a look now at how the change could occur there using the GFS model. I think it has been doing a great job of just honing in on this longer range pattern change for quite a while now, so that's why I'm using it a bit more than I normally would in this video. Notice Saturday, November 16th of 2024 in the morning, we've got a lot of mild 40s and 50s uh, indicated by those bluish turning to yellowish colors even up to the Midwest. And until the front moves through, we'll actually continue to see that mild air probably across the country. However, look at this. By the time we go towards our Tuesday, November 19th of 2024, this model indicating cooler air already sinking southeast. And that only intensifies Wednesday morning. And then as we go towards Thursday morning behind whatever storm ushers us in, look at these colors here. You see these whitish shades that go as far south as Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and North Georgia. Those indicate the freezing line, so where temperatures in the morning will be around at that 32 degree mark. And then as you get into those pinkish shades, even those reddish shades, the further north you go, that's when you're talking at 20s, sinking down to teens. And that would be widespread anywhere from Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, all the way over to the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. Again, that is a more likely scenario re regardless of whether or not we have a strong storm. And that brings me to the conclusion of this video where I'm going to go over the headlines of what I know now. Here are the four summary points of everything I just talked about in the last 11 minutes. No big pattern changes, first of all, for the next seven days. So as we go all the way through our November 17th, overall, if anything, just some rain in some parts of the central and eastern U.S. as mild conditions prevail. A bigger storm signal is on the models, maybe some precursor activity to that as well by the time we go towards around the November 20th time frame. That storm, so not this week, but the following week, that is the one that could carry some snow over the northern part of the country, really from the Dakotas all the way to the Great Lakes, depending on which model you look at. If the cool air catches up to the moisture of it, and if that storm even exists in the first place, regardless though, a cooler pattern is likely soon, and that is the big takeaway of this video, that cooler air is more likely by the time we go to the middle to the back half of November for at least a few days, and of course, I'll keep you updated on everything about the upcoming cool down, because I'm sure whether you like cool air or you don't, this really interests you. Make sure to hit that subscribe button right down below for consistent, accurate, and educational forecasts for me in the future right here on YouTube. I hope you have a blessed start to the week ahead, and I will catch you in my next update video, which will probably be Tuesday evening. One nation weather.